Wood saying, quote, lawmakers must act now to close New York's double jeopardy loophole and ensure that anyone who evades federal justice by virtue of a politically expedient pardon can be held accountable if they violate New York law. But wouldn't this violate the Constitution? Let's ask newly pardoned conservative filmmaker, author of The Big Lie, Dinesh D'Souza. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let me first get you to you react. Know, uh, more... I might. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, far from uh, shuddering at this latest development, I'm actually uh, chuckling about it because I think it's very eye-opening. Uh, I have uh, maintained from the beginning that this prosecution, uh, in my case, was political, that it was motivated by uh, the Obama administration's desire to somehow get me. And uh, the other side, uh, the progressives, Preet Bharara, my prosecutor, uh, said, no, that's not the case. This is just civil servants acting, uh, for carrying out the law in the normal course of things. Mm -hmm. And so here comes the uh, attorney general. This is the highest um, judicial official in the state of New York. Yeah. And she's basically saying, listen, the normal course of things didn't work. This guy got away. And now we got to get him some other way. So let's come up with a strategy for prosecuting people twice. Right. Uh, and uh, she, I, my favorite term is the double jeopardy loophole. So this basic constitutional protection Ed, has now become a loophole. Uh, and I guess if I had gotten off because of an illegal search and seizure, they'd want to close the illegal search and seizure loophole mm -hmm. or the Fifth Amendment loophole. So you see that these people will stop at nothing. This, it confirms that this is a political hit, and if they don't get their way, they want to be able to take a second strike. But, Dinesh, what do you say more broadly to the criticism this week that, look, the president pardons you, even though you face these charges, you were convicted in a court. He said you were treated unfairly because you believe it was political, but you were convicted. Uh, and now he's talking about Rod Blagojevich and um, Martha Stewart and that it's not going through the normal process. It's not going through the Justice Department and being carefully weighed. Well, the first point to remember, Ed, is that even though there's a lot of, you know, a lot of talk to the effect that he voluntarily admitted he was convicted, it's important to realize that these things are a bludgeoning process. In other mm -hmm. words, the way that they get a voluntary plea is they threaten to, to put on all these additional, often redundant charges. They describe the same thing four different ways. Each of those crimes carries years and years in prison. So they right. basically say to you, you will be, we will destroy your life unless Unless you plead. And so both the innocent and the guilty are forced to plead because of the strong arm tactics that they use. Now, right. the very fact that, they, that Trump is looking at people as diverse as Martha Stewart and Rod Blagojevich, a Democrat, shows that this is not just Trump uh, rewarding his ideological friends. He's looking at high profile cases to kind of send a message that the system itself may need some fixing. But a lot of people feel like they're bludgeoned in the judicial process. In your case, you had a very powerful Republican in Senator Ted Cruz, who was able to bring this to the commander in chief, wasn't that favorable treatment? Uh, yes, it was. But it was also the case that I had a very powerful Democrat, Barack Obama, uh, who was uh, very upset about a movie that I made, was denouncing me on his personal